I'm John Magnuson with the Cedar Tree Institute, and we're here to launch Earth Keepers 2, an interfaith environmental initiative in the coming two years with a focus on energy conservation and community gardens and bring back the native plants. Community church gardens. I have faith in seeds. Very good things will come from this. Delta Green is the technical partner. This is building on the work that our collaborative communities participated in from 2004 to 2009. And thanks to the United States Forest Service and the United States Environmental Protection Agency, at the heart of this work is a group of students from Northern Michigan University. My name is Tom Merkel. My name is Caitlin Bingner. I'm Adam Magnuson. But we will be working with tribes, especially Keweenaw Bay, and I want to honor them. Expect great wonders. Native Plant Garden, we're hoping that the gardens can bring people closer to God's creation by working in the earth, um, as well as closer to each other. And to help us with that uh, is our partner with the U.S. Forest Service, the Eastern Region Chief Botanist, Jan Schultz. I'm, I'm very pleased and, and really proud to be a, a part of this um, project. And um, I know that very good things will come from this. I'm, I'm very comfortable in saying that. Um, so when I think of this project, I think of the word source. And there are several segments of this that have to do with that, that notion. <clears throat> the notion of, of sources and of these religious facilities as sources. Obviously, we've heard about uh, the energy conservation and these institutions, these facilities serve as sources for that you know, information and the insight and the uh, things related to energy. So that they become a source for that, and it's very inspirational. The other part of this that several folks mentioned, Kira just uh, mentioned it, are the gardens. The sources relative to the gardens are, are about threefold. Uh, one of the sources has to do with the notion of, of food for people, vegetable gardens, and produce that goes to those who may need it. I mean, what a delight to have fresh produce, uh, especially in this part of the world, <laughs> especially now. Um, so the idea of taking a seed and soil and sunlight and poking that seed down in the soil and having sunlight. I didn't say sunshine, I said sunlight. <laughs> and the production of something that's just nutritious and helpful to people is amazing. It's a delight. I giggle when I, when I do that in my backyard. What an amazing thing. You know, the miracle of photosynthesis, to take carbon and all these other attributes and to make it into a product that's sustainable, wow. So these facilities serve in that source and it's inspirational in that capacity. The facilities serve as a source for information and as examples for the control of non-native invasive species. And this is a little bit more murky to look at. If you look, for instance, at a typical churchyard, there's shrubbery, there's grass, there's a few weeds, there's some spaces that look better than others. But probably in most of those facilities, we would have, for example, the non-native honeysuckles. They have pink or white flowers, they smell fabulous, they produce thousands of red berries that the birds love. And on that facility, they don't really make much of a negative dent. But if you walk down the road into unrefined wood lots in woods, the non-native honeysuckles that represent the a monoculture in the understory is really, really problematic and really destructive. So the notion of being a source for the inspiration of the control of these um, ecosystem altering non-native invasive species is a good thing. And also not being the source of them is a good thing. And then, let's see, my third source related portion of this has to do with the native plants that present an option for some of these facilities and the native pollinators 
that require them and tend them. It looks like such a small thing, but it really isn't. For example, when we grow vegetables, we have to have these uh, honeybees and these other native plant insects to pollinate our fruit and, and vegetables. We all know that, but what we don't know is that they might not be always present when the squash blossoms are blooming. So if they don't have another source of food while our vegetables are growing, our vegetables won't be pollinated. These small native gardens serve as the pollinator source for the vegetable garden, not just in that churchyard, but in the neighborhood. And that is really a delightful thing. My native plant garden in Milwaukee is about 20 feet by 15 feet. And I've got all kinds of native plants in there. And it is just a delight for me to see my workers in there uh, in the morning and coming back in the evening. The um, male um, bombus or bumblebees roost in the, in, the, uh, in the plants in my garden. My garden serves as a repository for those native bees and other pollinators for my whole urban community. And I see them coming back from Kmart, Walmart, and everywhere else with their little pots of tomatoes in, you know, after Labor Day when it's clear, we're certain there's not gonna be any frost. And I feel an incredible amount of delight thinking that my 15 by 20 foot uh, little confab of my native plants helps us to sustain, really and truly helps us to sustain their vegetable gardens. So those church lots and other uh, facilities related to that really do matter. And what we are doing really does matter. So I'm delighted. You know, one of the recurrent themes in all the great religious traditions is that, that which the world rejects, uh, God does the real work. That which is small, great things come. That, that which is rejected. And uh, one of the fascinating parts of uh, this ongoing uh, work, this great work, uh, is to partner with the Native American communities here in the Upper Peninsula. They have struggled, those of you who know your history, in over generations fighting to protect their sovereignty and their traditions and their teachings. They are joining us uh, as partners in this initiative. And what I've got here is from the Keweenaw Bay Greenhouse that was built in 2010. These are native plants. I know that very good things will come from this. That is community church gardens, whether it be a vegetable garden, a hewing garden, a meditation garden, herb garden. My native plant garden in Milwaukee is about 20 feet by 15 feet. And it is just a delight for me to see my workers in there in the morning and coming back in the evening, the male bombus or bumblebees roost. My garden serves as a repository for those native bees and other pollinators for my whole urban community. These small native gardens serve as the pollinator source for the vegetable garden, not just in that churchyard, but in the neighborhood. And that is really a delightful thing. Those church lots and other uh, facilities related to that really do matter. And what we are doing really does matter.